So this morning, Steve kind of asked us the question of who remembers a paper that was written 20 years ago, which pretty much started our efforts. And what the implication was on us as a community, given the fact that we don't really remember that paper. So we kind of went down a different road. And um, our question is, have we actually verified the processes that we've been using for 20 years enough? And if we haven't, what does that mean for those processes and also for us as a community? So it's the title, How Valid Is Your Validation? And I'll be talking about Jove. In detail, um, I'll briefly start out with the motivation behind this work and then talk about the traits of a validation, of a valid validation tool, which we have defined. And before I forget, if, um, when I say we, the work is, was largely done by Yvonne Tuna and myself cooperatively, resulted in two papers. The work on the benchmarking approach, namely for TIFF and JPEG, was largely done by Yvonne, and I focused on the synthetic test file approach for PDF files. And I will con conclude by um, stating what the implications on Rosetta are and give an outlook in the future. So the motivation for validation versus identification. I talk to a lot of people who say, well, I don't really need to validate my formats, right? I identify them, that's it, I know what it is. So if you go back to your hotel tonight and you're bored, or for those coming from Australia, especially who are incredibly jet lagged and wake up at two in the morning and uh, need something to do, I'd like to invite you to just Get out your text editor, write those two lines in it, save it as a PDF, and see what happens. Right? So what happens? You run it through Droid, and Droid will tell you, yup, that's, that's indeed a PDF file based on a signature identification. It looks rather empty, right? So if you try to open it with any kind of PDF rendering software, it will tell you exactly that, that a problem has occurred and the content can't be shown. Well, most likely due to the fact that there is no content. That's why we need validation, so what happens then? We try to validate the object either directly by Jove, which will tell us that it's uh, indeed not well formed, or we can run it through Rosetta, ingest it where it gets stuck in the TA um, validation stack in the workbench. Um, it's kind of important to note here that it fails based on a, a TechMD extract error, and it doesn't really say in this point, uh, at this stage, that it's a validation error, but more a technical metadata extraction error. I'll get back to that in my very last slide, just a brief pointer here. So, I hope that everybody agrees now that validation is indeed an important task to do, to tackle. But why Jove? Right? Okay, I said that we clearly prefer valid files in our digital archive, and we have to rely on tools for validation because manual validation would never scale. Jove is the go-to validator for the digital preservation community at large. This was um, in 2015, somewhat proven by the OPF community survey. Uh, we had 132 respondees, and Jove came out as the second most popular tool with 73% uh, of the respondents saying that they use it in production. I find it a bit surprising as a side note that Image Magic actually surpasses Jove in uh, the use in, in, in production. Um, so yes, naturally it's also integrated into Rosetta like all other digital preservation systems. Um, Jove wraps different kind of modules for different kind of file formats, so you have one tool that can support a variety of formats. But the question at hand is can we actually trust the results? And can we maybe improve the tool or method to check whether we can um, trust the results or are there even any tools or methods available? So we sat down and started out by just brainstorming what we consider traits of a good validation tool. If we want to embed a validation tool in our digital preservation processes, what are we looking for? And we can differentiate the qualities that we're looking for um, based on whether they are more allocated at a framework level or at a module level. Jove is the framework, so we want the framework to be robust. We want it to be sustainable. Someone should take care of it. Um, they should guarantee that the tool should be around for a while, that the output is interpretable over time, over different kind of versions, and it should be usable. Uh, ideally, um, integratable into different systems, but also as a standalone tool for file-by-file -file tasks that you do in your daily curation work. On the module level, we want the tool to actually cover what it says that it covers. If the tool covers PDF, does it really cover all of PDF? That's a good question that you have to ask yourself. The output should be human readable, machine readable, and most importantly, understandable. That's not always the same thing. Um, and the validation rules, most importantly, should be complete and also correct. I will focus in the next few slides on the um, traits, coverage, stability, and validation rules. I think output is something that everybody has a lot of experience with and everybody can kind of make up their mind of whether they can understand it or not. So coverage, <clears throat> I mentioned that 
if it says PDF, we would like to know whether it really covers all of PDF. Now, if we call something PDF module, it would be very natural to assume that that covers every PDF. But yeah, PDF is not PDF. There's so many different versions of PDF. Especially for the Jove PDF module, it's very important to note that it is not a profile and version validator, but it's mainly a structural and syntactical checker. It sounds very complicated. What does that mean? There's the basic PDF standard, right? that uh, describes the, the 1.7 specification, which tells you what any PDF at the basis looks like. If you generate a PDF, that's going to be the PDF specification. And within that, it describes the structural features that every PDF has to have. Based on that ISO standards, other ISO standards have been put forth, like the very popular suit of PDFA standards. That's what we call versions, or um, the, yeah, well, different kind of PDF versions or profiles. So that's why you have different profile checkers, like PDFA checkers, that just check against the subset defined in the PDFA standard. To turn this around, it means that if, you, if a PDFA tool will tell you that it's a valid PDFA, that does not necessarily mean that the underlying PDF structure has to be intact. You can have completely ruined PDFA files, ruined on a structural level, and the PDFA validator will tell you that, no, they're fine. They, they do adhere to the PDFA specification. So yes, it's a complicated business. It does look better for JPEG and TIFF module. The coverage there is pretty, pretty good. All JPEG um, format versions are covered. JPEG 2000 is not covered, but that's as is expected. That's a complete different format. And there's also um, a, JPEG module, a JPEG 2000 module within Jove. For TIFF, the same thing. The major TIFF versions are covered. Not covered are a few extensions, such as Big TIFF, which are more recent developments. There's more modules within Jove, but we had to limit the scope somewhere, so we settled for PDF, JPEG, and TIFF, as those are the kind of file formats that most of us uh, have in our archives. So now we look at, at completeness and correctness. Completeness is a really hard business. We started out by kind of looking at the numbers of pages in the specification, the number of possible Jove errors that exist, and also the lines of code in the Jove module. I found it interesting that there's no correlation between the three. Um, uh, there's, there's very few uh, JPEG errors, 13, but um, at the same time, it's, the, the, there's, there's a lot of pages in the specification, whereas TIV has far fewer pages in the specification, but um, about five times as many possible Jove errors, so that those are not related in any way. So the only way that you could actually check completeness would be to go through every standard, derive every shall and should node that's written in the standard, that object should have this, or cannot have this, or shall have this, and uh, then to find or create test objects for each of those clauses. Two problems there, naturally. One is the prerequisite is that you have to have a clear and formalized standard. Standards are available for the three um, file formats there, but anyone who's taken a, a weekend um, full of joy and read through the PDF specification knows that it's not quite as straightforward as you would like it to be. Um, and the more important problem is, of course, that this is an incredibly labor-intensive task. Correctness. What can we do? We've um, discovered two approaches, or we settled on two approaches. One is benchmarking. So for TIFF, what do we do? We look for other tools that support the same file format to then run a test suite against um, the, uh, against the different formats, uh, the, the different project, uh, the different software, sorry, plus Jove and see if they actually agree on the result. For TIFF, there's a number of software packages that do that. Um, Performance DPF Manager just came out of the, um, the Performer project. There's the EXIF tool, which can be used for some form of TIFF validation, but more extraction. Same thing for Image uh, Magic, and then one of the, actually, Rosetta customers, Slope, has developed, uh, developed the Check It TIFF um, software piece, which checks against different kind of um, TIFF policy requirements as well. Same thing for JPEG. Exit tool and image magic can to some degree be used for extraction and validation. Not quite as good. Much better as bad Peggy, um, which is pretty much the only solid alternative to Jove for JPEG. For PDF, it's a bit more problematic. So Vera PDF is a PDFA profile checker, but I just talked about the difference between profile checkers and PDF checkers. Vera PDF can be used to check some of the requirements, which are also requirements in a PDFA profile. For example, you can use Vera PDF um, to check whether your PDF file is encrypted. But that's the fact that an object is encrypted is not a validation of the PDF standard per se. 
so it's not a PDF validator. The only other alternative that kind of started is a method to um, validate PDF files. It's called Caradoc. It's a French development. It started as a little research project. The main difference between Caradoc and, and Jove is that Caradoc starts as a blacklist approach. So we'll say everything is invalid unless it meets all the requirements that I've defined. The requirement definition is pretty, a pretty tedious project, and um, I think they've defined around 20. So I guarantee you, if you're going to run Caradoc against your, um, against your holdings, you're not going to have very many valid files, even though they may be valid. So what can we do for PDF files? Well, that's the second approach, then we go into th synthetic file creation. But first, back to the results for TIFF and JPEG benchmarking. So TIFF, um, the test uh, suite used was the Google Image test suite, um, and we ran Jove against the DPF manager. The results is that we only focused on those files that are not, ren non -re not renderable, so out of the image test suit, we picked out pretty much the absolute worst cases and, saw what ha and then checked what happened. So the two tools agreed on 80 fi 81 files. They both said those are invalid. We can't do anything with those. The bad news is that they disagreed on two files, and the even worse news is that Jove was wrong. Jove said that oh, those two files are well-formed and valid. They're perfectly fine. And just right, they actually pass your TA check and go straight into your archive, whereas you can't even render them. So that's a big problem. Similar for JPEG. Again, um, we used the Google Image Test Suite, and Yvonne collected the very impressive 2,800 test objects from her colleagues, I think, which weren't really ran, um, used for the, for the benchmark. But I think it's very impressive that just by asking your colleagues for the amount of broken JPEG files that they can find on their computers, they find such massive amounts. Um, so to come back to the, to the Google test suite, from the around um, 1980, 97 files that they were ran against, they agreed on 89, per, 89 files. That's, again, a pretty good result. But they disagreed on eight. And moreover, on seven, Jove again missed the file, declared them as well-formed and valid, and bad Peggy said, no, there's something wrong with the files. Those seven are shown down there, and you can make up um, your own mind whether that was artistic, uh, in a form of artistic creation that was supposed to look that way, or whether something happened to the file. That's, of course, the question that we will have to face when we look at these objects in the future and don't have any information about whether they were supposed to look like that or not. So that was the part about benchmarking. Now about validating validation via synthetic test files. Sounds rather complicated. I'll try to briefly explain the business. It's not quite that bad. So we start with the Jove well fortness criteria, which are pretty basic. It's actually what's written down there. All Jove says is that, in general, a file is well formed if it has a header, which is supposed to look like that. It has a body consisting of well formed objects. That's actually the tricky part. It sounds really easy, but there's so many different kind of objects that you can have in PDF. So that's where the business gets really complicated. It also has to have a cross-reference table and a trailer defining the cross-reference table size in direct reference to the document catalog dictionary. And it has to end with a set marker. So if we went back to the first slide with a, the exercise that you have when you're bored at your hotel at night, the end marker and the, the header is actually what uh, Droid uses as the signature pattern. So we start with these well-formedness criteria, then went and cross-checked that with the ISO specification and said, well, what does the ISO specification actually say about the trailer? Derived test cases from that, built the test file manually in a test editor, and then ran Jove against that. To give a little example, this was the starting file that we had, and that's most likely the most simple working PDF file, valid PDF file that you're ever going to see. Um, it only consists of five objects, uh, that's an object graph on the left, and all it says is uh, Hello PDF World. So just one page, no embedded metadata, that's it. We wanted to keep it simple on purpose to ensure that the validation process was easy to understand and easy to reproduce. So then, as an example, we took the clause a body consisting of well-formed objects. As I said, we visited the standard, so here's an example from the standard. Um, a piece of the body is the document catalog. So if you look at the PDF standard, it will say things like um, it has to have the key name type, um, which is uh, the, it has to have a type name of the key, with a key type, and that has to be set as catalog for catalog dictionary. So there's two requirements there. 
the thing on the left is what's actually handwritten in the PDF if you ever bother to open a PDF in the text editor. So you see type and catalog. Those are the two things that the standard points you at. So you can do two things. Uh, one thing that um, we did is we just kind of, uh, we, ch we changed the catalog value to something else. So that would be the wrong type key. And the other thing is we deleted it altogether. So you have two kind of variations of the standard there and two things that you can check it against. And the assumption is that your, your validator will pick up both violations. So overall, we built 90 of those test files. Two are rather general, and it's kind of the color makeup between how many of them are allocated at the body, how many are, are pertain to the trailer, and how many to the header. I said that the body is a pretty complicated <laughs> business. That's a funny statement in itself. But <laughs> so you see the different kind of objects that um, we wrote test clauses for. So the test set results for, for a PDF. There's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is that the majority of the test cases, namely 71, which um, is about 80% of the test suite, were validated correctly by Jove. The bad news is that 18 files were not validated correctly, and 70% of those were considered well-formed and valid. So that's just, it's a really easy example, and it was a really simple PDF file that we built. It's nothing complicated, um, which has hundreds of pages and embedded objects and pictures and AV streams. It was just text. So in case you're still thinking, so what, right? So two of the test cases were considered well-formed and valid, but couldn't even be rendered by Adobe or any other PDF software. So those PDFs were completely ruined. And then there were cases like that, the one on the right, where, as you can notice, the text is kind of missing. And then the one on the left, where the very helpful error messages, an error exists on this page. Acrobat may, may not display the page correctly. Please contact the person who created the PDF document to correct the problem. Yep. Have fun with that. So what are the implications on validation in Rosetta? There's two kinds of things. There's false positives and false negatives. False positives is when um, th those are actually the things we deal with on a regular basis in the TA workbench. The validator says, well, there's a problem with that. That's not well formed. And we do a little bit of digging in the, in the, um, in the file, and we look around, check it against the standard, and see, well, uh, that was just a misjudgment. Actually, it's an error. It's a bug in the, f in the validator. It is actually well formed. So that's, it requires work, but it is detectable. Currently not detectable is the false negative. So the validator tells you it's well formed, and it isn't, so it goes straight to your permanent. What are you going to do? All you can do is you wait for the validation tool to improve, and then regularly rerun your validation stack across your entire holdings. One approach that we can take as the benchmarking um, approach showed is that we need multiple tools to find the truth. By many of us, that's work which is currently conducted at the pre-ingest stage. So to move from the so what to the so now what, this is a little bit of a call to arms for validation in Jove in general and as well as a suggestion for Rosetta. So no one said that digital preservation was easy, right? And that's especially true for file formats. We know that. That's not big news. But we as a community need to take responsibility for the community-owned processes and tools that we use. So I would like to ask you all as the call for arms to question the tool output and to get involved. <coughs> Ways to get involved is um, Carl Wilson will talk a little bit about that um, as, during the lightning talk as well. There's Jove events such as the Hack Day. The picture down there is actually Xlibos participating in the Hack Day this year. Adi showed that earlier too, but anyone can participate in that. There's um, groups like the OPF document interest groups which handles um, information about the error, uh, error messages for the Jove PDF module currently. That's also a working group that anyone can get involved with, regardless of whether you're an OPF member or not. You can, of course, also become an OPF, member, uh, an OPF member or donate for Jove. The suggestion for Rosetta, to conclude, is to allow for multiple tools to be run against each other in the validation stack. Adi already mentioned that this morning, so he kind of took away my thunder and completely made my day. And uh, also to have a clear distinction between validation and technical metadata extraction in the plugin type and error mapping. That goes back to the very first slide where I showed that it's a validation error, but it was kind of protocoled as a technical metadata extraction error. So if you're interested in any further information, um, there's a couple of blog posts that highlight the um, image tests that were run by Yvonne. And then we have two papers. One is an IDCC paper that came out last year. And there's a forthcoming IPRESS paper on this as well. Thank you. <laughs>